What's going on guys, in this video we're going to be reviewing my new favorite mobile app and that is Delta. You can see off to your right or your left, whatever, this side you can see this is the mobile app, it's on my phone, it's available for both Apple and Android. It is the best app, at least in my opinion, to track all of your investments, whether you have cryptos or stocks or mutual funds. Uh, an IRA, whatever it might be, this is a great way to just put everything together all into one and then easily look at it on your phone. Uh, the only other, the only better way to track all this stuff, I would say, is by following one of my videos to make uh, the portfolio tracker so you have that on the computer. This is not available on the computer, it's only available on the phone, but we're gonna walk you through it right now. And before we do that, guys, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and check out my channel. And for those of you who's gonna ask, no, this is not a paid sponsor. There's been a decent amount of people asking me for sponsorships and affiliates and all that stuff. Uh, I have said no to all of them and that is because I wanna keep this channel genuine and what I actually like to use. These guys probably don't even know I exist, so that's how you know it's real. I just genuinely like using their app. But let's dive in. So this is the home screen. You got your main portfolio up top. You got all of the uh, indices over here. And then if we scroll down, this is all the positions. You see I have this only show followed assets. If we turn that off, give it some time to load, it's just gonna show you know the top gainers in the market. You know, we got top losers, cryptocurrency stocks, right? Gives you a lot more. I just wanna see what I'm following so you could flip that on. And then this is all the stuff that I'm following. So we got our most active, our top gainers, top losers, cryptocurrencies, stocks, and then funds at the bottom. So it's nice how all of that is down like that. But let's dive into the good stuff. If we click on where it says main portfolio, oh, and it, you know, another cool feature, you could turn that off if you wanna show someone this, but you don't want them seeing what your net worth is. You could close that and they won't know what you have invested. It'll just show the stocks that you have and the percentages they go up. So I think that's really cool. But let's turn that back on. We're gonna click on this and it jumps over to this page. So this, you see, I got my stocks, my crypto and my funds. And then even below, we got available cash at the bottom. The reason why I really like this is, what if you have $5,000 sitting under your bed, right? You're paranoid, you don't trust the banks and you have that as emergency money, whatever it might be. And you wanna add that into your portfolio well, that's the beauty about this. You could manually enter everything so you can manually enter that $5,000. Or for all of my crypto lovers out there, maybe you have a decent amount of Bitcoin and it's on a cold storage, right? You can't track that. I mean, you know, okay, whatever, I have X amount of Bitcoin on a cold storage, but you could at least manually track it in here. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be manual. If we click on the add button, there is Connect Exchange, Connect Wallet, and coming soon, Connect Brokerage Account. But I like this because it's a lot of manual uh, entering, so I'm not giving people my social security number or access to any of the brokerage accounts I have. It's purely manual, so there's no way someone could trace it. And it's very simple, where it says Add Manual Transaction. You click on that. Let's say I'm buying another stock. We search the stock, so you can see how easy it is. So let's say, I wanna buy another share of Apple. So we click on Apple. Right now it's current price is $149. Let's say I got it at $148. So you just change it like that. The amount bought could be one, could be a thousand, whatever you're buying. Let's say I bought one. If you have an exchange uh, fee, so you could add that fee in, $499, whatever it might be, and then deduct from US holdings. Right, so if I click on that, it's gonna deduct that, if you remember from the home screen, well not the home screen, but the second screen I showed you, at like 5,100 and something dollars, uh, this will deduct from that. So then everything will stay balanced, which I think is really cool. And then if I hit add transaction, which I'm not going to, it'll just add it. That's all it does. It, well, nah, I'm not going to, but it will add it. And then what that essentially will look like if we go back, X out of that, we'll go into stocks. The only complaint I have about this app is it does lag a little bit, but it's not that bad. 
And then here we go, Apple, where it says 46 shares, it would have updated to 47 shares. Now say you made a mistake, you can just go to transactions right there, and then you see that we could edit this. So if you click on this, there we go, this was a transaction I had, 154 is what my buy price was, I deducted it from my holdings, and then I bought one share, okay? And here's my other transaction, this was pretty much all the transactions I had, that's my only other complaint because I'm not, and it's you know no fault other than my own, because I'm not hooking up my brokerage account, which I don't even think you can with this app yet, but that's fine. I just had to sit down, it took some time, but I manually entered everything in. So I saw, okay, I have this many shares of Apple, and you know my average buy price was that. So I was plugging everything in. It took me maybe 10 or 20 minutes, but then I was able to get everything up and running. But let's go back. So you could see, this is, everything broken down we go over now here's all of my stocks so i can see all my stocks we can look at one day we can look at one hour we can jump over to a week one month one year and then all time we can jump over to crypto which is the next one so here's all of the crypto and then we got funds as well so again i think it's really oh and with crypto if you click you can see what your value is in bitcoin and what it is in ethereum or what it is in fiat. So I think that's really cool how it kind of breaks everything down like that. But let's jump back to the home screen. And now that you kind of understand how this uh, app works, it's really easy to just put everything in. Then I could scroll down and if I wanna see, okay, let's show all. Here's all my top gainers. And it's gonna show me pretty much my best asset all the way down to my worst asset for the day. So it looks like I was in the green with everything except Facebook. Or if we go to top losers, then it's, it's just the reverse. So it shows pretty much from the biggest loser all the way down to the uh, biggest winner. So I think that's really nice how it's just right there. You don't have to worry about clicking on several different exchanges or brokerage accounts or wallets to see how everything's doing. It's all just right there. And because I'm the crazy person that wants to make sure it's accurate down to the dollar, uh, I would test it out for a couple days. I'd make sure is my exact amount, is that amount shown on the screen gonna match all of the stuff that I have? And I was really surprised. Maybe it's a couple dollars off just because the way that this app is updating compared to my brokerage accounts, but it is very accurate. Accurate enough where I don't care if I were to add everything up and it's only $10 off, right? You got very, very small variance, so I am really impressed with that. Uh, but I think another good thing that you may not catch right away, you may not realize, but let's say I went and bought some more Bitcoin. Before I buy that Bitcoin, if I don't have any money in that account, I need to obviously fund that account. So I go on to Gemini, I fund the account, I, whatever, I put $1,000 into it, I take that $1,000 and then buy some Bitcoin. Great, now I can't just jump onto crypto and say, okay, I bought another 1,000 Bitcoin, so let's you know, click on that and let's add a transaction, right? Or we'll click add down there and then add a transaction. Before you do that, because you uploaded another thousand dollars onto the exchange, you need to make sure this is reflecting that. So click on that available cash and then where it says add new transaction, make sure to add that thousand dollars in before you start buying something because I added a thousand dollars into my brokerage account. So we'll say I added a thousand. You could write a note too if you want. So you know this note is um, funded Gemini on 9-15-2021. Just so I could keep track of all that. Add transaction. So it'll load, and then you'll see this five thousand now jumps to 6,000 and there's the transaction down there. Let's, let's go back to that. You can see the transaction is right there, but let's hit back and there. Now it updated 6,193, everything gets updated. Now if I jump into crypto and not hit Bitcoin, let me go back. If I hit add, manual transaction, crypto, and then we're gonna search Bitcoin BTC. There it is. Now, to add it, one thing you do have to uh, do up here where it says trading pair, depending on the currency you're buying it in. 
So you, just, you could search. So USD for me, we click on that. Sure, we'll say I bought it for that price, amount, $1,000, or it would be less than 1,000, it would be like, I don't know, 900, we'll just say 990, and my transaction fee is $10, or whatever it might be. And then you can hit done. Before I hit add transaction, I'm gonna do deduct from USD holdings. And then hit continue. Sometimes that error will come up. So we're just gonna hit continue. And let's see why that error came up. Oh, amount bought. I wasn't buying 990 Bitcoin. That's what I messed up on. So you're gonna have to figure out what it was, what that $1,000 was but that will show on your exchange. So what your exchange or your wallet would say is, you bought 0 0.001 Bitcoin for the average price of $48,108. So whatever, uh, let's figure out what that math is really quick. So I'm buying around 0 0.02 Bitcoin. That's gonna be roughly $1,000. I'm gonna be a little off, but you'll be more accurate when you're punching it in because you will have the exact amount. You just gotta make sure you copy everything exact. So when it's 0 0.028593, make sure you punch that all in. We hit done. And then you can see right there, at the very bottom, it says this transaction is worth $972.02 Bitcoin. We'll deduct $972 from your USD holdings. So we're gonna hit add transaction and refresh the page. You can see that it's a little slow, only complaint, really not that bad. Now it updated, right now it says I have 0.45. If we click on it, let this load, we could go to transactions and there it is. There's the transaction right there, the most recent one, September 15th. And then even cooler, if we go back to the home page where it says cash available, it was 6,000, now it's back down to 5,000 because I just invested that $1,000. But I mean, besides that, that's the main function I use. There is news that I think is pretty cool. I really don't use the news that much, but some of you may find it uh, you know, helpful. So here's all the news, there's a for you section. Seems like everyone's copying that for you because of TikTok. We got following, so you can go and follow places, direct, whatever that is. Uh, and then let's see, if we go over to favorites, let's see what the stars. The stars just everything that I have invested. And I guess the last thing is if you click on this, let's click on, it doesn't matter if it's stocks or crypto, but if you're looking at one of the stocks, so the general is really nice how they break it down show you yeah it has good information so we got general all right paypal's trading at 282 dollars nice little price chart we want to throw on some candlesticks we can we could go all the way out to all time we could go five years we go all the way down to one hour no data for one hour one day there's the recent day or we could go back to the line chart uh looks like you could hook it up with etoro i guess they have a deal with etoro uh, you got market data, which is down here. So just showing you some basic stuff. If we hit show more, then you get some more advanced stuff. We can look at the price to book, the price to sales, all this nice stuff. And then we got news below. So pretty standard, but I think it's cool how it's all there. I'm really not digging into that stuff. Uh, to me, that's much easier to look up on the computer. But my main function is just, okay, great. I can easily see how everything's doing because if you're investing in both stocks and cryptos, you may be up big on cryptos one day, but that same day be down a lot on stocks or vice versa. So you wanna know, hey, instead of trying to do quick math in my head, especially if you have maybe three or four different brokerage accounts, two or three different crypto wallets, whatever it might be, then it gets kind of hard. You gotta do some math, a nice little math exercise every morning to figure out, okay, let's see how I'm doing. Let's add everything up. Instead, boom, it's all right there and everything's entered manually so you don't have to worry about anyone spying on you. It's impossible. You saw, I was just able to add $972 worth of Bitcoin that I don't own, right? So no one's tracking you, which I think is really cool. Uh, so there's no paper trail going back. But again, great app. I think it's very beneficial. 
I'll leave a link in the description so you go right to it. Again, they don't sponsor me. They probably don't even know who I am. But if you guys keep hitting that subscribe button, maybe bigger companies like this will. Doesn't mean I'll necessarily uh, do a sponsorship with them because I like providing you with genuine reviews. But guys, that's all I got for you. If you liked this, make sure to smash that like button. Drop any comments below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.